Welcome to Weld.com. We get into some project stuff and we've been asked to, how do you work with thin wall tubing? This is four inch, eighth inch wall thickness tubing. And we're, um, we're goofing around here with a little project design. It's kind of cool, kind of fun. Our blueprint reading class here at the college, students have an option of designing a project and, and doing a project. And when I say that, we don't take that lightly. Um, the project entails a full drawing, a justification, a scope, a uh, material list, weld symbols, the whole nine yards, calculating the weight, cost of material, everything. So anyway, last semester we came up with this. Students want to design a rocket stove. And at first it was going to be something that we would backpack in and, uh, you know, when when we started adding the legs and then the weight of carbon steel material became a little unattractive for that. However, cool little project. Uh, we fired this thing off and I'm telling you when they say it's a rocket stove, it goes. This thing produces the heat. It is a near smokeless fire so it's you know it'd be burning small kindling and chips and stuff. You can cook on it and you get a lot of heat off of it. So what happens here is I've got a square end cut over here. I've got a square end cut on an angled piece. The top riser, which I don't have cut yet, would come up here about uh, another 18, 24 inches or so. And we put a cap that hinged on this part of it for feeding the fire, but we don't want air. We want to regulate the air through this over here. And we cut a cap and put a threaded uh, piece on here so that we could regulate the airflow. Okay, so just for some workmanship here, I've gone ahead and cut the hole in this and I've skinned the mill scale off of this weld area. And I wanted to show you a couple of things here. Uh, I've cut this opening for feeding the fire. And what happens here is we've got a little bit of a radius here and I have clean this and I've also kind of cut this chamfer back because we're going to put a very, all these welds are going to be small. We're, we're talking about eighth inch material and we're talking about gas metal arc welding. And you could also TIG weld this, it'd be fine. But um, we just want to kind of feature this. We're going to be running off the Esau Rebel 215. We're going to be running about 17.5, 210, 215, 210 on the wire feed speed. Uh, 40% inductance, want to make a little soft weld, 7525, 030, ER70, S6 wire. So uh, let me get my gear on, I'll be right back. Uh, one thing I did want to mention is these welds are all pretty standard. It's this one back here that's going to cause a problem. We've got this 45 degree angle cut on this tube, and so our settings are going to change back here. We've got a long stick out. So when I get my gear on, I come back, I'll show you what's going to happen with it. Well, welcome back. We have our parts tacked up. These are, these are parts that we're going to do on a build later on. Um, the, whole, the whole thing was a problem solving thing, working with thin wall tubing. Uh, again, we're working off of a Rebel with 030 wire. This is not going to be a problem with these this weld or the side welds because I'm going to position them non-critical stuff. What presents the problem is the back side of this and we get into this sharp V angle. This is a 45 here and we're going to be reaching back. We're going to have to increase some values here because we're going to have a, a long electrical stick out. To get beyond that, uh, you know, if I was doing a bunch of welds like that, we could get tapered tips tapered contact tips, but again, this is like a one-off thing. So uh, I, wanna, I wanna do a couple of these welds here. Uh, again, they're just, they're just merely structural welds, but uh, 17.5 and 
first couple of welds we made, we were at 17.5 and 210. <clears throat> and again, small welds, you know, we did a little slight stitch in here. We haven't, we're not having to manipulate or do anything. The welds penetrating fine. This is perfect for what this project is and everything. The problem now is I'm, I'm way back in this confluence of this angle, which forces my gun, unless I put some kind of a tapered nozzle and tapered contact tip on here, I'm not reaching in here. So I need to make a value adjustment. And it's real simple. You know, again, if I had a bunch of these to do, then I would change consumables, but I, I'm just, I'm one off here. I'm just gonna make a simple change. I'm going a volt and a half higher to facilitate the longer stick out, and I'm turning my wire feed speed up very little, just five inches a minute to facilitate that. Again, <clears throat> I've seen a lot of people do this and all of a sudden they come out with this enormous weld. I want to keep the same size weld that we've been doing. Okay, we finished this weld. I hope you heard this on the audio, but this thing, uh, <clears throat> it sounded horrible. It really did, but I went ahead and stayed with it. Uh, you know, if anything would have happened like porosity or if it just been, been totally off, I, it's hard to reach back in there. I'd almost have to go get a nine inch grinder and put a thin blade to get back in here to repair this weld. Again, it sounded horrible. Two things could have happened here. I either missed my wire feed speed by 10 or so, which I don't think I did. What I think happened was the angle that I was in, I think my wire may have got bounded up in the liner because it really just sounded slow. If the, if the I'm, I'm, again, I'm sure you heard it on audio, but I went ahead and stayed with it. And the weld for what its purpose is, is, is fine. It's, uh, it's small, it's probably 3 16 wide. Uh, it doesn't need to be you know, it doesn't need to be a great big wide le wacy weave or anything in there and we blend it into our tacks. So, you know, the whole point is machine adjustments, things happen when you're doing projects and uh, this came out okay. When we do the whole build, we'll have uh, finished parts with the caps and everything and, and uh, we'll go through settings and how to tack this thing up. This will go fairly quick and it's a cool little fun project. This is for the hobbyist, you know, so uh, shout out to uh, Esob and the Rebel, great little machine. Uh, shout out to Steiner for the Pro Series MIG gloves. These are very comfortable, very comfortable. Nice and thick, got a back shield on the back hand pad here. So uh, thanks for watching. Bob Moffat with Weld.com. Make sure you subscribe to the videos.